Hello! It is no longer October, I'm not wearing a Halloween themed outfit, and I'm not showing you how to do a Halloween science experiment. What a weird feeling! I hope you guys all enjoyed Halloween Science Booktacular and all the little miniature experiments I did every single day. If you haven't seen them, be sure to check them out. They're super easy to do at home with your kids using stuff that you can find at in your own house already or even just at Walmart. I thought I would just provide us with a little bit of a channel update given the fact that it has been one year since I launched my YouTube channel. I posted my first video of Halloween last year as my debut into the YouTube world. And while that's kind of crazy, it's been a full year. But it's definitely been a full year learning experience. I don't even want to go back and look at the first video I posted because it was probably so cringy. I don't know if my video making skills have gotten that much better, but they're definitely better than where I started. Since it's been a full year of making YouTube videos and having this channel, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why I got into this into YouTube in case I mean I've gathered a whole bunch of new subscribers that I didn't have a year ago obviously or even like two months ago just a little bit about why I'm here and why I'm doing this so I graduated from grad school last year so May 2023 and I was incredibly depressed after graduating with my master's degree in analytical chemistry it was not a great time for me I got really stressed out and anxious in grad school, again, very depressed, and I was losing my passion for science. I like was like, I don't even think I like science anymore, so why would I, let alone like want a career in science? So I didn't fully know what to do. I got married, and my husband gave me the wonderful gift of letting me figure out what I wanted to do. Not having to get a job right away, not having to like do a bunch of stuff, just take the time, figure out what you want to do with your life, all good. And so I did that, and I kind of settled on this, on becoming a science communicator, starting a YouTube channel, sharing my love of science with all of you guys and the things I know with everybody, and making science really accessible and easy to understand on just topics that get me excited. And that's what I've been doing, and I have seen a great improvement overall in my own mental health and my own relationship with science, because I have had a lot of fun sharing all like learning all this information or sharing information already new with all of you guys with you guys who watch and comment and enjoy learning new stuff just like I do and I have it's been yeah it's been a lot of fun and I've just so happy to see that I've come to love science again because that's such a huge part of my life and when it kind of when I started to hate it I, I it was hard for me so that's a, I think a really great success of having this YouTube channel is the fact that I'm loving science again and I'm a lot happier now than where I was also just like a year ago or even earlier this year I was still kind of not super happy and there are some days where having this channel stresses me the heck out especially trying to figure out like the YouTube algorithm or what people really want but I just have to remind myself at the end of the day that it doesn't matter what anybody else really wants to watch because they're not going to watch it unless I'm having fun doing it so I've really tried to make it a goal to just keep having fun on this channel so I thought I would go through kind of some of my future plans for this channel and content. So again, we're just going to have more freaking science fun. More fun on this channel. That is going to include, sorry, I got notes to keep me on track. That is going to include more crafting projects because blending science and art together in my crafting projects is so much fun. And I think a lot of you guys enjoyed my periodic table outfit or science 50s outfit video so more of that stuff to come if there's anything else you would like to see on this channel or any science topics you want to see covered please put them in the comments below you're always free to comment any science questions or things you want to see in the comments i'm happy to hear them and just learn about what you want to learn about there have actually been a few comments people have posted that have inspired me to look into subjects I wouldn't have explored otherwise, and that was super fun. I've learned a lot of things from your guys' comments as much as I've learned from just having this channel. So please do that. I love your guys' comments. Overall, this channel is going to be more fun. It's going to be more science-y if that's even possible. I'll figure out a way to make it possible. I asked on my Instagram and YouTube channel if anybody had any science questions they wanted me to ask because I was going to answer some science questions in this video and I did get a couple of questions. So let's go through those now. Hee! <laughs> Alright, so this first one up here is are there any 
poisonous snakes. And there was like a parenthesis here of being like, yes, I actually do mean poisonous. So I think that's a fantastic question. And well, I think all of them, let me, let me back. All the questions I got were fantastic. So on the topic of poisonous snakes, you probably know because some annoying kid when you grew up always explained it to you. And yes, that kid was me growing up. The difference between poisonous and venomous. So poisonous means it's toxic to you if you come into contact with it via touch, like a poison ivy, you touch it, or something you eat. So you ingest, like arsenic is a poison. You ingest it, you die. (laughs) Versus venomous is where you're injected with something harmful. So snakes on the whole are, when we talk about like a snake, we're talking about venomous snakes because they have fangs that they use to bite their prey or in defense bite us and that injects venom which causes it to be toxic to us. So snakes on the whole are venomous. However, there actually are some poisonous snakes as well. So the tiger keelback snake is an example. It actually eats poisonous toads and instead of like dying from the poison in the poisonous toads it takes the toads poison and accumulates it into its own body so that way if something tried to eat that snake now they themselves get poisoned by that poison the snake was holding on to so not only can the snake bite you and inject venom into you but also if you tried to eat it it would poison you as well so yes poisonous snakes do exist but not as there's not as many as there are venomous snakes all right, next question. Why are stovetop fires blue, but campfires and candles are orange? So the answer to this question is pretty simple. The colors of flames have to do with how hot the fire is and what type of material is being burned. So a really, really hot, pure burning fire is going to be burning blue. And when you have like a stove top, a gas stove top, it's releasing the right mixture of propane gas and oxygen as fuel to undergo complete combustion, meaning that everything in the reaction turns into a flame and there's no other byproducts. It burns really hot, it burns really pure, it burns blue. If you have a candle or like a wood burning fire, there are other things going on in that fire that number one, it's gonna be a little bit of a lower temperature, hence kind of the reds or oranges or yellows. And also you have pieces of incomplete combustion, not completely being consumed by fire, producing byproducts that are also gonna alter the flame temperature. So even like if you have burnt on food onto your gas stovetop, it might alter the flame color a little bit as well until all of that food gets burned off. We love it. Combustion, temperature, and material can change the color of a flame. It was actually really fun for my birthday. My husband found these color changing flame candles and they don't burn like orange, yellow, or blue, or I guess they kind of were burning blue, but they were burning like greens and blues and stuff like that. And that's because of different additives to the candles that do burn in a different color. So those were fun. Somebody else asked, why do some birds migrate in the winter and others don't? Is there a connection between the size of birds that migrate? All right. So birds migrate for a couple of different reasons that scientists have observed, because obviously they can't interview the birds and ask them, why are you migrating, sir? So scientists just have to observe some reasons. And the two main ones are food. They're migrating in in search of food sources or reproductive grounds. So they have to fly or go change their home location in order to reproduce. So it's not necessarily due to size that some birds migrate or other birds don't migrate, but just whether or not they have a food source in one location throughout the entire year or a breeding habitat in one location throughout the entire year, or as the season, if as the seasons change, the birds need to move to accommodate their lifestyle. There is some reported evidence though that body size does impact when migrations start. So larger birds start their spring migration earlier and their fall migration later than smaller birds. So size of a bird doesn't necessarily affect whether or not it will migrate, but there is some evidence that it affects how long they migrate for. And just as a fun fact within a billion different fun facts, the Arctic Tern has the longest migration going from the North Pole to the South Pole every single year, a journey of 55,000 miles. Ooh, my bird must be tired. 
All right, I think this next question was a little bit of a joke because I have seen the meme, but it was still interesting to me. It was basically talking about if like vegetable oil comes from vegetables, olive oil comes from olive oil, where does baby oil come from? The answer is in babies. But I actually just really wanted to know where baby oil came from. So it does depend on the brand of baby oil you buy. The baby just mean, in the description, just means that it is oil safe to use on baby's skin. Doesn't mean it was made out of babies. It doesn't mean it's like anything specific. So there's mineral oil based baby oil or vegetable oil based baby oil. Um, vegetable oil again comes from some sort of blend of some sort of vegetable. And mineral oils come from refined crude oil. And this is like super, super refined crude oil. So that means it is okay and safe for the skin. So I don't actually know if you wanted to know where baby oil came from, but now you know, it's not babies and it's not actually anything in specific. It just depends on the type of brand you buy. So read that ingredient list. And then finally, I thought this was a really interesting one. Um, made me think a lot. <laughs> but it was, if you could be known for one important discovery, what would you want it to be? I thought about this one for a while. And I decided I would either want to have discovered something that made a really big impact on the environment, that like actually sparked another kind of round of like, environmental protection legislation or something that just kind of like how Rachel, what Rachel Carson did with Silent Spring, but something that like made a big impact on the environment and saving the environment. Or I would want to do something that did make a big enough impact to make it into the school books, but that was ridiculously weird and hard for kids to remember just to mess with them. So you know, kind of like when you had to learn about photosynthesis and for whatever reason, like there's plants have two different photosystems, photosystem one and photosystem two. And in the steps of photosynthesis, the plants use photosystem two before they use photosystem one. This would probably be a very niche example, but it's like there are weird backwards things that like kids have to remember in science class. I would want to discover one of those weird backwards things and make poor kids like have to memorize it for the rest of their days. Just, just to be a little chaotic. Um, so either really good or just wanting to haunt the lives of students forever. Or it could be both. I could make some sort of environmental discovery that is hard to remember that would impact kids for the rest of life, but they'd be forced to know. Ha ha ha. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so those are all the questions I got. I really enjoyed answering them. So again, please send me more questions. You guys think of stuff that I wouldn't necessarily think of, but I want to know the answers to already. So please do that. Thank you all so much for watching this update. I don't know if it was all over the place or if it made sense. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Filming in the new studio space. But yes, October is over, which means that long format videos about science come out every Friday now. Thank you so much for watching this channel and subscribing to it. If you have any wish to support this channel any further, I have set up a buy me a coffee page so you can like have it set up to be like, buy me a test tube. So please do that if you want to. The link is in the description of this video below. You don't have to, it's just if you want to. Thanks. But anyhow, thank you for supporting me on this journey of learning to love science again. Thanks for tuning in, listening to me talk about science, do crazy stuff, and I promise you guys a whole heck of a lot more science fun in the future. So thanks for watching and keep it sciencey.